All right, guys, we're going to start lab number eight, gas laws with Alka-Seltzer. Uh, that's a name brand. Uh, we are not going to use the expensive name brand. We are going to use the Kroger brand. It does cost quite a bit less. Notice that we do have a lot of ingredients here that you want to be aware of. I'm going to give you this. You have aspirin, citric acid, sodium bicarbonate. So if you wanted to look at this more closely, you can. Each tablet is supposed to contain also four, uh, 524 milligrams of sodium. Um, some of those things, store it room temperature, that's always been done. So this is what we've got here. Also, got balloons. Now it says to use nine inch balloons, but we are going to use 12 inch balloons. We have string, a ruler, um, a large beaker. We have the scotch tape. We have used this thermometer and have measured the room temperature to be, we said that is, well, I touched it and it got warmer. We're gonna change that to 17.1 degrees Celsius. All right, uh, we've got our test tubes. So today, the room temperature is 17.1 degrees Celsius. The weather app tells us that in this location on this day, that the air pressure is 30.07 inches of pressure. That would be inches of mercury. So you're gonna to have to convert that to either millimeters of mercury or atmospheres of pressure, depending on which R value you are using in your calculations. Make sure that you cancel the correct units with the correct R value. So we've got our equipment ready. We're going to get our Alka-Seltzer powder. We're going to crush it. We're going to get the wing boat. We're going to uh, get the mass of the round balloon and fill the balloon with the powder and get the test tube um, fixed with the balloon with the powder in it. I know the instruction says to use the book, but we're going to use the end of the meter stick uh, the one that we don't measure from, we're going to use this to crush the material. Trying carefully to not open this bag. So we get that crushed. So our next step is to get the mass of a weighing boat. We're going to hit zero, and then we're going to add our material. So now that we have our material, it is 6.50 grams. So that is the mass of the powder we are going to put into the balloon. Because this is a simple latex balloon, it won't react with the stainless steel top. We can put it directly here onto the balance. Get it centered, 2.77 grams for the empty balloon. So one of the little tricks I like to show is to transfer the uh, uh, tablet into this powder, into this balloon. We're gonna roll up one of these into a bit of a cone. It keeps this open. Uh, you could imagine how hard it would be to transfer this. And so this helps to transfer this material into the balloon. We're gonna get every bit of that that we can. We're gonna make sure we get this down in there, into the balloon. Make sure it's all in there. And so, hopefully these two will add up. Our next step is to fill this all the way to the top. I'm gonna to wipe off 
the rim just a bit so that any tape will adhere. We have some pretty good tape. I like to use the good tape, the Scotch electrical tape so that it doesn't leak any gases out. And so, so that we can get to the very top. There we go. Here's the hard part. We want to get as much gas. This is what we, want. we want this to be an empty with at least the gas. We know it's got the material in it. We want this to be empty, okay? And we are going to put this over the top. Notice nothing is reacting yet. So we have very little air in this at this moment. We're going to carefully, this is a lot easier with two people. We're going to tape this, because one person can hold this up, one person um, lifting as we go around. It works better. Hopefully you're seeing this. So this electrical tape, because it is vinyl, it can stretch. We're gonna pull that tight around this. Oh, and I've got just a tiny bit that has gotten into the water, which is okay. I think I've got this tight. There's no air leakage here. So again, here's what's going to happen. This is going to react. We shouldn't see any water leak or air leak here. And it does say in the lab to invert this so that we get a really good mix. None of the powder that was in the balloon will not mix. So we're going to let this react until we see all of the chemicals react here. We've got the acid, uh, which was a, in a solid state. It was not going to react in the solid state uh, very fast uh, with any of the other uh, bicarbonates. Uh, and so we want to make sure that this gets converted all to gas. Whenever this stops bubbling, what we want to do so we've got air pressure on the inside of this balloon pushing out, which is now equal to the air pressure pushing in from the uh, air pressure or the barometric pressure. And so it, whenever this stops happening, uh, this inflation stops whenever this is equal. Now we do have to, if we were super, super uh, worried about it, we would have to take the elastic pressure uh, of the balloon itself because it is, of its elasticity. There is an ability for it to um, push back against the gas as well. So that will be part of our error. And so as I mix this, try not to hold it as much so that it doesn't heat up. Remember, all of this is at 17.1 degrees Celsius. And so a little bit more solid in the bottom. That could be some of the other ingredients. All right, whitest. We want to get the circumference, okay? With this string. Which, again, if you got two people, it makes it a lot easier. We don't want to pull it in. We just want to get that. And what we want to do, take our marker, we're going to mark that. That looks probably one of the more imprecise parts of the lab. 
So now what we have is this mark and we can, that we saw, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we marked it and now we can measure this with our meter stick. So why would we want to make sure that we measure this on our meter stick? Well, I know I've got a little mark, but what happens if that mark gets wet and we lose that mark? And so, man, that's gonna be nice. That mark is showing right at 33.00 centimeters. So that was the circumference of this balloon was 33.00 centimeters according to our meter stick. So what we've done is reuse this vinyl tape. This is flat, it's empty, we've uh, gotten everything out of it. We have taped this onto this spigot again. We're going to use our string that has the mark of 33 centimeters on it. And we're going to fill this up with water so that the diameter is equal to that. to support the bottom of it just a bit or it will pull off and we are a little too much it looks like what we can do we're going to pinch this off all right we're going to untape it and we can let some out let out enough water Tape out of the way. And we're there, right there. And so we really didn't need to measure that, but the, uh, the circumference, but uh, we did just in case our spot would have gotten uh, uh, wet or we would have had a second day that we needed to do this. Now what I'm going to do with this, is all I'm going to do is transfer it to this beaker. I'm not going to use this beaker to measure with because this is not a great device for measuring. It's just a container that I can put this water into it. Try not to lose any. I lost a few drops right there. Then we will put this, or, or transfer all of this water to the graduated cylinder. So it looks like we're gonna have close to 650 milliliters, a little bit less, but we'll find out whenever we transfer that to the graduated cylinder. I know you're not going to be lined up with the meniscus, but the process here is going to be fill this up. We can do a pretty good job. I'm going to do this really more precise. Okay. All right. So if we want to be really precise, we can use this water. Remember, we're going to keep this all together. Get down here. We're going to make this as close to using only our water that's in the beaker that was in the balloon. We're gonna call that 100.00. We can get all of that out, see? We're gonna dump this. This is gonna take about six times, right? And then the last one is going to be the one that is not exactly 100 milliliters. Hopefully we're getting this. So there's 200.
300. This probably looks boring. Lower end. Some of this lab work is just tedious to try to improve our accuracy as much as possible. So this will be 400. There's 500. Now again, what we could have done is just poured it close to a measurable amount Instead of exactly 100.00, we could have just said, okay, it was 97.8 or 96.3, and then added those up. And that would have been just as easy. Um, but if you have the equipment, sometimes this works too. So we have right here. So there's 600. What I want you to realize is this right here showed us closer to 650 milliliters when we looked at it, right? So I've got all of this out of my pipette. There's not gonna be 50 milliliters. This is why the beaker is not a measuring device. It's a very close approximate. Yes, there's a few milliliters maybe of drops in here, but that's not going to be near enough to make up for um, the amount that was supposed to have been like at 650 or so. So we've got to move this up, keep it nice um, and even. So I'm getting here. So this is 11, 12, 13, 14.9. We're going to say 14.9. So what we've got here is 614.9 milliliters was the volume of the water in the balloon at the same circumference as when we had the gas in the balloon. So 614.9 milliliters. So at this point, somewhere in the video, you were supposed to calculate or write down the mass of the Alka-Seltzer powder. Uh, we said that the circumference of the balloon is 33.0 centimeters. The volume of the water that fits in the balloon was 614.9 milliliters. The room temperature in degrees Celsius is 17.1 degrees Celsius. You will need to convert that to Kelvin. When we looked up the pressure, it was 30.07 inches of mercury here in this area. So you will need to convert that directly to atmospheres or you can convert that to millimeters of mercury and then convert the millimeters of mercury to atmospheres of pressure. So that does it for lab number eight, gas laws. You should have all of the information required to go ahead and get that done. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me or make a reply to Google Classroom somehow. Good luck and uh, see you in lab number nine.